Hello, everyone. I think we're on. I think we're on, everyone. Welcome to the Nerd On Update, the weekly show where we talk about the nerdy news that we're excited about, and the second part of the show where we answer questions from you, the audience. Um, and I have Amy. I'm gonna I'm gonna look this way because that's where she is on the screen. Yes. We have Amy with us today. <laughs> Amy uh, is a longtime friend, collaborator, uh, co-podcast hoster, uh, and and uh, will body me in all things that are comics, web comics, animated things, uh, life skills. She's a, she's a better mom than I will ever be. Um, you don't know that. You have opportunities. Everyone you know, can grow. I, I, one day I will be Arnold Schwarzenegger and I will have my daddy, Danny DeVito, next to me. Um, uh, <laughs> twins. I, It'll all be twins. Yes. I made sure that I wore uh, my best tonight uh, mm. with yes, uh, yes, some, yes, yes. some everywhere, every, everything everywhere all at once shirt. But Amy, please tell the audience where they can listen to more of you. And then uh, just, t- just t- talk about your world for a little bit, baby. Mm. My world? Well, first, hold on. I, I got to get official. Okay, um, okay. There it is. Perfect. We have to. We have to. Properly. Um, hi, Nerd On Nation. I'm Amy, of course, of the Capeless Crusaders. Um, I have known Tom since, oh my gosh, 2015? 20, no, 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 no. 2016, 2017? I have pictures. I do have pictures to prove it, but we're not going to do that right now because it, it's just not polite. Um, you can also find me interning um, on Tuesdays with the Film Philosophers um, at Film Philosophy 101 on most social medias, blah, 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 um, <laughs> which is mostly movies, movies, aggressively movies. Um, I am being schooled by people that know much more than me, and that is A-OK because always an opportunity to learn. And yeah, I'm your resident kind of weirdo, but hey, I'm in good company. So. Hey. Everyone's yeah. welcome here, baby. Um, All the levels of nerd are welcome. Yeah. So. so everyone in the chat, everyone listening to this, watching this on the VOD, uh, pour one out for the homies, Corey, Josh, the Steves, Caitlin. All of them are sick. We absorb their powers, and we become more powerful than they could ever imagine. We are the alpha versions of them now. <laughs> um, and, and we You're got a alpha Tom? Yeah, I'm alpha Tom. Uh, Auto- Automatom. Um, and, and we got, we got, uh, we got a lot of news tonight, um, again, doing the live show version. So we're just going to chat. Amy, how you been? How, how, what's been up with you? Um, it's not bad. Um, of course, because I juggle many, many balls in the air. Yes. All the jokes you can ha- make and wear many hats. Juggle, 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 juggle. Um, I manage at our local gaming cafe, our Lord of the Rings gaming cafe. And so of course we celebrated the boy, what you. Did, did, did we not have look, 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 time out, time out, time out. Because so, so I, I came from Sacramento, right? And then the moment I, I left, it. everyone was just like, hey, let's do all the cool shit now. And mm-hmm. then it was like, Oblivion. And then it was like, uh, Coin Op. And then I was just like, where, where, where was you when I was there, baby? And and, and, and so, so I mean, if I perchance were to take a trip up to uh, said Sac Town, is there mm-hmm. a place I can go to? Yeah. Well, I mean, you could always visit there and back Cafe and Games, which is your resident Lord of the Rings gaming cafe. No joke. The front half is literally like working to be a hobbit hole with coffee and we do all sorts of different toasts. We make hand pies weekly. I create all the specialty drinks that are not coffee based. So like you can get butterbeer. You can, well, we call it butter brew. (sighs) (laughs) <laughs> hi, hi WB, we see you. Um, but you can get buttered brew, pumpkin juice, um, poly juice potion. I make a whole bunch of different like mana potion, healing potion. Um, like I make shenanigans and shenanigans make me happy. So I just perfected, and this is like the only time I'm saying this, I just perfected a key lime pie drink. It tastes just like key lime pie and it is not like heavy. So I got to figure out how to work that onto the menu, but yeah. You, Tom, you know where to go. Like, I, 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 and I mean, if anything, I'll, I'll just hit you up. I'm just going to text you. <laughs> you just going to be like, Amy, I'm here. Where am I going? And I'm like, that way. That way, and a left, and a right, and then a left. Uh, yeah. in, 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 the, in, the, in the interest of a little chit-chat, because it's not going to be news space stuff. Now, I don't know if they're in the chat, but Ethan Who put me on... And I mean, you've been talking a lot about this show, and I feel like I just was not ready for it. I, just, I recently mm. started watching Steven Universe. 
and I'm on season four. I'm and not in the right shirt. I have the Stevens. Oh, keep going, keep going, keep I, going. I'm on, I'm on season four, and I'm yes. uh, I'm yes. scared. Like this is what I hate. I hate TV sometimes because yes. TV could be like such a comforting companion through certain parts of your life. And the worst mm-hmm. part of it for me is when you have to say kind of goodbye once it ends. And I know there's like movies and there's Stephen Future and all that stuff, but I'm just like. Like every episode, like and so on HBO Max they have every fifteen minutes, and mm-hmm. then but then, I I no longer hate uh, childish Gambino Donald Glover anymore for being stupid talented at multiple things. I now hate Rebecca Sugar for being absolutely mm-hmm. uh, phenomenal at writing, storytelling, directing, uh, animating, as well as songwriting. And then, you know, knowing that, like, Steven is based off her little brother, um, telling this world. And I think, I like, it's so, and I, 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 you know, one day maybe we'll do an episode on it, but, like, I just can't stop seeing the praises of thinking about, like, oh, here are these wacky, crazy ideas of these gems, and they're the aliens. And then it's like, but don't you want to know where they came from? It's like, I didn't know that was even on the table. It, it, like, I felt this way with regular show where it was like, isn't that crazy that skips, skips? What if we told you why? And you're like, I, wh- why, why, why you got to do it? And that's, and like, Cartoon Network is just too good at that. Like, I know a lot of people are Nickelodeon heads, and they're just like, yeah, it's like, you know, the kids are running the studio. But I'm like, Cartoon Network is like, they're in the the eighth dimension of just being like stupid cartoon, but then like yep. four episodes in, you're like, oh no, now I'm emotionally invested, and uh, I I'm like, this is a good show on it. Like, I don't, I'm not in love with the art, uh, the the um, art design or the uh, the mm-hmm. uh, the st- the style because I was like, it doesn't look like anime and blah blah. blah. But then also you like the the animation is really clean the animation the expressions are really clean um the designs are very clean as well you're like you know i may that may subjectively not be for me but it's like you can't say that's like that's not artistic and well made and then just the subject matter i was like kids need to watch adults need to watch this it's i I was i am just surprised so much i'm like i can't believe i can't believe i can't believe it so um, I'm proud that you're finally there because, my dude, you have been sleeping on one of the most delightful pieces of animation. And I say animation because it keeps on going. And yes, there's Steven, Steven Universe Future and there's the movie and you are talking about multi-talented, like just everybody, polymorphic sentient rocks. Like that's where we're at, man. And it gets you in all the feels. It has spawned conversations and oh, I'm really hoping just the generations that continue to connect with it connect in such a deep place that they not that there's an outcry for more but it's like you've done um, Gravity Falls mm-hmm. so you know how you felt uh, about I, 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 didn't, I didn't finish it all but yes I've, saw, I've okay. seen some okay so when you get through that entire puppy you're going to kind of see some of the parallels and I do want to give a note to whoever in the chat brought up uh, Misadventures of Flapjack mm-hmm. because Misadventures of Flapjack and I 100% agree opened the door for all of these creators and creatives to come in and bring new ideas to the table that we were all able to connect with. Like I even, we bring up Chowder at work. Ooh, like we're chowder. ridiculous. I, I, love I love Chowder. chowder. Love Chowder. But, but Steven, you were so there's a guy that I watch total aside. There's a guy that I watch on YouTube and he does reacts and people, all he does is react to music and people are like, Hey, my dude, you know what you need to react to the music from Steven universe. Mind you at this point, um, all of the seasons had come out and it was right before the movie. All he did was listen to the music and he started interpreting it and how it made him feel. And he was bawling, like sobbing and connecting. And I was like, yes, yes. And then he, he made a video of him watching the movie and he was freaking out and crying. But as soon as he had finished that reaction one for the music, he went back and watched the entire, all of the series. And I'm like, welcome to our herd. It's too it's brilliant. Good. It's, it's, it's it, yeah. Um, uh, love like you. I, I started listening to that now while I do my daily reading and all that stuff. Um, before we get into the new stuff. Hello, everyone in the chat. I think Cortaniel left T dog. Uh, Johnny Horror, Mamba, T- uh, Love Hammer, we got uh, Adamus, we got Drew Drew. Hello, hello. Welcome. It is Monday. How are we all sounding? We sound good? I mean, we went I this entire tirade and we're like, I don't I hope we sound good. We went through so much just for that. 
Uh, no, no, no echoes or anything like that. Um, oh, and pops. oh, and so now, um, uh, Amy, you gotta, uh, you gotta be part of the, um, of the, of the claps of the, uh, so normally before we used to record this as part of our podcast, we had to get audio sync. We I, do the clap sync. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, but now we don't do that. Uh, now we just clap for fun. So, uh, Amy, whenever you give me a chance, give me a little clap. Oh, oh, this is, this is Amy. There you go. Sorry for anybody's ears. I always do this. This I usually, I say either chlamydia or I say this is audible, <laughs> and then I do that. <laughs> uh, so and then yeah, and and Brad loves it, and so I mean we just do it for for now. It's just a fan service. Clapping for thing. Brad. Um, since we kind of is this like is this sorry is this like the blind girl that wrote Mister Rogers about feeding the fish and so every time afterwards he whenever he went to feed the fish he said i'm feeding the fish so that the little blind girl who would listen to him every day knew that his fish was still alive i didn't even know did this you story. not know i don't even know this story my existed. dude no. my dude that that sounds very lovely that, that, that that's also oh my it's, god that's so sweet <laughs> like have so have you gone through the won't you be my neighbor like have you seen i've, the I've seen the documentary have you seen the ends? You've seen the Tom Hanks. I haven't seen the Tom Hanks. Okay, so watching the documentary, and then if you can handle it, like a couple days later, watch the Tom Hanks, and like you're gonna find all the parallels and the kindness. And but yeah, the story about feeding the fish literally is in the documentary. I don't remember. So I don't. I don't know, man. But yeah, that's. So I'm like, are you clapping for Brad? Or are you actually clapping for people? <laughs> I, I I mean, uh, for the for, for the people now. But like, okay, I'll say this: when I watched uh, "Won't You Be My Neighbor," it was when Movie Pass was out, right? I think uh, yes. I remember Boy, watching it that. middle of the day, and there was people my age, and then people like in their sixties. No one in between. Everyone was crying, right? And so I'm just like, mm-hmm. that that that's that's what I remember. But um, and it was just lovely. And then I just lo- I just remember the most from that documentary of like him going to court and being like. PBS needs money and you need to give it. And then everyone's like, yes, we love you. <laughs> he's like, I guess you just got a couple million dollars for PBS. And he's like, mm-hmm. Yeah. That, yep. That, uh, nope. But we do have news tonight. And uh, since Amy, this is your first one, I'll let you know what I'm going to be talking about. It's a lot of drama. Um, and then Amy, tell, tell, tell us other, other bits that you'll have afterwards. But I'll, I'll start it out. Uh, hey everyone, I'm the DC boy, aren't I? I'd like to talk about the mm. DC things, but you know what? A lot of, a lot of, a lot of drama. <laughs> oh a lot God. of drama. Uh, first off, we'll do the big banger. Batgirl, ninety million dollars originally supposed to be a seventy million dollar movie, but guess what? COVID costs a lot of money. Um, and he made it cost ninety million dollars. Now, there's a lot of people saying that there was a lot of a tax kind of thing or a write off or something like that. I'm not 100 sure on that. There are probably some trades I can read upon. But the only thing I could say is what I listened to in the earnings call. So I listened to the earnings call the day after the Batgirl film was canceled uh, last week, which was after our Monday uh, update show. Um, and that was like a hour and a half long earnings call thing. And you had David Zaslev, who is the current CEO of Warner Brothers Discovery, not to be mistaken with Warner Brothers Media, which was once owned by AT and T. It is, it is a, it is, it is my childhood in in parent form of like, hey, I'm going out for cigarettes. My name is AT and T, and then it never came back. And then Discovery is just like, hey, all this, all these things you had die and um so with that i think a lot of people are kind of conflating a lot of issues that happen with warner media and then the things that warner brothers discovery is doing now if you want to be accountable let's be accountable uh flash is going to be ending uh preemptively so they're not gonna have a full season at season nine uh gotham knights is canceled uh naomi is canceled uh batgirl is shelved it is finished it was it was a f- it was wrapped in principal photography, but they had not done additional photography. They had started doing um, test screenings, um, mm-hmm. but then none of the visual effects was done. So if you saw yeah. previs, you know all that stuff that happens. You know they want to see where the story is and all that stuff. What they can add uh, now, a deal. Uh um, Arby and Bilal Falal um, are the directors. They recently did Bad Girls for Life, and then they originally were going to do the Miss Marvel show, but then they left, and so a new showrunner went in. But they kind of like started most of the pre-production stuff for there. Kevin Feige has you know opened up and you know said his condolences, mainly, may, many for me. 
Leslie Grace, Michael Keaton, Brendan Fraser. Mm. Um, I, it, no one deserves to have their film kind of shelved in that way. And I believe it was Bilal Falal's uh, wedding he found out via social media. Very, very just tragic thing. Now, if we want to do a little per, like perspective commentary on it. Uh, you know, you know me. I'm a big Snyderverse fan. Um, it's just a shitty experience because you got a lot of people who are like, I'm a true DC fan who have been like, well, we wouldn't have bullied Warner Brothers to release a Snyder Cut. We would have just moved on. Now saying hashtag release Batgirl. Why isn't the Snyder Cult doing anything? And then the Snyder mm-hmm. Cut fans who are like, why are you asking us to do shit? You called us bots and Nazis for, you know, 10 years or four years. And so it's just like, it's just bad bickering. It's just bad shit in the DC fandom, uh, which sucks. To me, I think the most in open, heartfelt way, no one should ever experience that. Whether your name is Zack Snyder, your name is Michael Bay, or your name is Leslie Grace, your films shouldn't be like taken away from you. And that's the unfortunate thing. And the, the, the current status of it, David Zaslav had said that, he really liked those filmmakers, all the stars attached to it, but the film was not where he wanted to be. Um, now, a lot of people are also getting upset and angry because uh, Leslie Grace is a Latina actor, and mm-hmm. this film was going to, you know, take away representation. I think that is something to to look at. However, I think there's a lot of DC fans who are saying that now in bad faith, and there are there are a lot of people saying that in good faith. And that's like the unfortunate thing where like a lot of people are conflating it with like, this was our Latina movie. It's like not none of you, no, not a lot of you were talking about it in that way. A lot of you were talking about it in like it's a Batgirl movie and mm-hmm. excited about that. But we all knew it was an HBO Max film. And so that leads me to Blue Beetle. And a lot of people were really afraid that Blue Beetle is going to get canceled. Um, the test screenings for the Batgirl uh, showed out very, very low. And I mean low as in it was the same as Bat- uh, the Black Adam movie. And so the Black and Adam movie. And, oh, I didn't hear about Shazam. Uh, yeah. And the Black Adam movie still has a release date. More controversy. The Flash film still getting a release date. More controversy. Mm. At Ezra Miller today, um, oh they uh, are now being uh, officially uh, charged. charged. Yeah. I was going to say it's like sued, a, it was like a charge with felony uh, that happened in May. But they have been in rehab since July. So these are, you know, reports that are coming out now via Variety, Deadline, all the major outlets. Um, and there's still a release date. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are making jokes on one side saying, like, this mo- for every, you know, crime that Ezra Miller has committed, they should just take away that Flash and put more Batman in it. Uh, and now it's just going to be Batman Flashpoint. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I'm not going to complain. Let's go with that. I, I'm good. For, I'm good for a Flashpoint movie. Let's go. And and Let's this go. this is all comes off the heels from last week where you know Jason Momoa had openly kind of spoiled or, or or shared that it was you know leaked that Ben Affleck was coming back for Aquaman two. So a lot of people who are in fans of the Snyderverse like myself are like this could be cool but then we're also seeing like hey this is all very problematic stuff too and to me if zach snyder daddy zacky snyder is going to come back i don't know where his morality is going to be in that sense you know we do know that in army of the dead he did uh you know vi- digitally take out char uh chris D'Elia, um over uh once the allegations and 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 all the the, the cases came in from all the women uh that said that he had uh you know, uh, harassed and abused. And so and then we got Tig Notaro to take, take over. So I think typically Zach will be in the way of like, well, let's take out problematic people, which also means for Amber Heard, which is why Aquaman 2, we get more Ben Affleck, which potentially could be because of the case hearing. There's a lot. There's a lot going on in that DC world. And I'll just say it this way. I'll just say it this way. As, as someone who wants to be like, hey, we should be accountable for the, the actions and not just like, Oh, well, the guy part of my Snyderverse, you know, uh, is is doing bad shit with, you know, like Amber Heard. And he's like, oh, my God, what's going on? And, and you know, Ben Affleck or whatever. And so it's like you got to you got to be like, yeah, it's, it, does, it doesn't look great. And so that's why I would say, like, it's not easy being a DC fan. <laughs> it's, oh, my gosh. No, it's so hard being a DC fan. So but I mean, um, this also goes into a bigger thing where I have friends who are working on HBO Max shows and they're worried because uh, there was just reports that HBO Max was going to be losing 70 percent of their um, yeah. their infrastructure, which I would say it this way for people who are working creative. That's not what that means. It doesn't mean you're going to lose your job. It means that all the admin, all the people who push all the streaming stuff 
are going to go away. And this is stuff that happens with, like, big mergers. That's what happened with Disney during D23, like, three years ago. Um, and, you know, typically they will hide it behind, like, a big event, like Comic-Con, mm-hmm. but then they didn't. They try to make you smile. They're like, hi. Yeah, hey, hey. we just we just fired 400 Woo. people. Um, and that, It's they, okay, though. Look, look at our shiny. Like, did you see The Rock? He came in on a platform. Oh, my gosh. He was, like, totally fit. Like, just look at the pretty. Look at the pretty. Ignore it. Yeah, I mean, I think that I think that happened before the Wonder Woman movie came out um, that like 70 people or one of brothers got fired. And then one person said, like, oh, the Wonder, the Wonder Woman, this is 20, the 2016 Wonder Woman movie mm-hmm. was going to be or 2017 was going to be garbage and all that stuff. So it was like there, th- th- there's just ways that media tends to like to like, here's this art, these articles that have to be pushed out and then how they hide them and how they don't. Um, yeah. So it's uh, it's it's crazy. But uh Things like uh, Our Flag Means Death, um, mm. uh, shows like that are fine. But it, the crazy thing for me, again, a little, little, little tidbit, little tidbit. We have some time. It's only us two people. We're talking about news. Um, a lot of people are like, Raised by Wolves got canceled. I'm like, where were y'all? Where were y'all? That got canceled True. back in February. That got canceled back in February. Yeah. What are you talking about, man? Like, And, that, and, and that's a, a little bit, I think, where a lot of people are getting kind of conflated of like Warner Brothers Discovery is doing a lot of damage where it's like, Unfortunately, and this is how it, it comes out to be, where it's like Warner Brothers Discovery is doing a lot of cut cutbacks and uh, mm-hmm. on, on the things that Warner Media were like kind of just like running rampant. And I kind of will agree, and I, I don't agree with all the decisions, but I understand that like Warner Media had no direction. Um, yeah, they were like, "You got a show, cool. You got a show, cool." Greg Berlanti they were make. Oprah. Yeah, Greg Berlanti, make anything you want. They don't have to connect to shit. They don't, you know, like whatever it is. Like here's Gotham Knights, which is like not based on anything and then also we have a video game coming out and so it's like we don't want a con- conducive you know universe but yet we cry every time we get you know criticism for that so it's like yep. i don't know what you want no one kind of knows what you want i as a dc fan i'm like i'm keeping i'm fingers on the pulse i'm on it <laughs> um so it's crazy but being on that um uh, on that uh, earnings call, not like I was on, I was invited, but uh, Shh, he- you were on that earnings call. Don't worry about it. Hearing, okay. um, uh, hearing, uh, Deutsche Bank, Bank of America, all of them. One of their first few questions were all, "What were, what, why, why was Batgirl canceled?" You know, like, what yeah, is your direction with DC? And uh, it's interesting because it's just like. You know, the air cut, you know, people are still wanting the air cut to come out. I want the yeah. air cut to come out. And uh, $90 million for the Batgirl movie could have all went to the post-production for the air cut. So who, I, I don't know. I have no idea. And it's crazy to see that um, the directors, the cast, none of them have, have voiced anger, vitriol, upset, you know, anything like that. Uh, they're, they're just saying like it's heartbroken, they're, they're heartbroken and that they, they want the film to come out at some point. And so it's like, yeah. I don't know where that's going to go. I think there's still developments going on because David Zaslav had said that like his number one goal is going to be to retain the talent. And I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. what does that mean? Because the last regime of Warner Media are the ones that got, you know, Denis Villeneuve all pissed off because of Dune yeah. and and Nolan left from Warner Brothers to only to work at Universal. So it's like how, you know, like how David Zell is going to do this, I don't know. And to me, my thought, I don't know what that means. I feel like what that means is like we're going to redo Batgirl completely. Hopefully. This is the hope, the grandest hope in a perfect world. Okay. Redo Batgirl completely with the $200 million budget only for theatrical. Because okay. part of those calls was like, he's like, DC movies should be theatrical. Like, these are yeah. our, our biggest properties, and so they have to have a theatrical release. They're not going to be sent straight to HBO Max. And he said, HBO Max feature films should only be about 15 to $30 million. And those are going to be our testing grounds to see, like, young talent, in which I'm like, me, baby! But, uh, <laughs> uh, no. You're like, give, give to me. Come. Come yeah. here. And so yeah, there's just like, obviously, this is all just a PR nightmare for Warner Brothers Discovery. Mm. But I kind of feel like we'll we have to see. And to me, I'm just like confident that like and this is the unfortunate thing. I like I never, you know, never wish bad on other people. No bad movies ever come out. But like um, a lot of the the execs who were in charge of the last few years in the film and movie part of Warner Brothers are all leaving. Um, yeah. They all don't have a contract. They're all leaving by October. And to me, I'm like, hopefully David Zaslav is like, hey, let's get some of these people in there. And, you know, a lot of people are, you know, I, I apologize to Steve when you watch this. Um, but not a lot of people are, are excited about uh, The Rock potentially being the senior advisor of DC. 
um, because I think a lot of people think he's gunning for that. But and yeah. th- a lot of people are just kind of like, don't make it all about you. Make it about the whole. Make it about everybody. Um, it's not just the Black mm-hmm. Adam show. It is the DC Universe yeah. show. So it's like, you know, even I, you know, Robert Downey Jr. Right? It's like, hey, even he when he has a scene, he's going to be you know generous to someone else. It's not the Robert Downey J- Jr. show, even though like he got. Well, paid that's them. also comes and sorry to cut you off. No. That also comes from years of him being a part of teams and understanding that he he is only it's you're only as good as your weakest player and even then you are mentoring and leading and instead of being at oh gimme 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 it's a lot of like let's go we're an ensemble we're a team and we can all shine um in regards to the Batgirl movie I'm heartbroken period hard stop um because I love Batgirl and most of the time when it's a direct to DVD or whatever else, it's an animated. But the animated DC stuff, and you and I have had this conversation, is so flipping good. Like, if it had a theatrical, I would still go buy a ticket and I would show up. But when it comes to live action, DC does need to put it out specifically to theaters. And this is just kind of gut-wrenching. Um, because a lot of the stuff I was seeing, and this was one of the topics I wanted to bring up, was that they were in the mid-60s for their first test screening and it wasn't completed but shazam fury the gods got the same one black adam had the same like the same type of numbers and they're like "Mm, no it'll be fine so i'm in that boat i'm like i hope they're gonna take it off the shelf and they're gonna be like you know what let's do some reshoots let's get this organized we're gonna go we're gonna push for theatrical and with the news of them trying to mirror marvel's plan i have i'm like can i swear Yes, yes, yes. Like fifth. Okay. I literally want to go, whoever the fuck is in charge of your boat, get your shit together. Like, put your poop in a group and push it off the back of the boat and let's go. Like, it it's is Morty. Get your shit in a bag, whatever you got to do, take it somewhere. <gasps> uh, I, I mean, and that's Just the thing. Do it. And this is the unfortunate thing where it's like, this is like, okay, so if I'm going to name names and this is unfortunate, this is like mm. career suicide for me, but it's like <laughs> to- Toby Emmerich is the guy who's like in charge of Warner Brothers Pictures after Alan Horn. Um, okay. And so. Uh, Toby Emmerich was the guy who also said, like, hey, you know who should finish uh, X-Men 3, Last Stand? The guy who did Rush Hour. Like, no. bad calls left and right in, in certain yeah. senses. Like, you know, X-Men will always have that on their on their lineage, on their yeah. legacy now. And that's the unfortunate thing. And Toby Emmerich will always be the guy who said, okay, it doesn't matter that Zack Snyder's daughter died. Like, finish the movie. Get whoever you need. Jeff Johns get whoever you want and then Joss Whedon goes like I don't give a shit this movie has to come out in 2017 no matter what we can't push it out and is also just like you know do, do do whatever Marvel does right and there's a difference between do whatever Marvel does versus what I like what David Zaslav is saying in this again where all comes before this was mm-hmm. after on the heels of Alan Horn who um, you know be- best known to have helped you know he was the uh, head of production at Warner Brothers during the Harry Potter Matrix yeah. uh, Lord of the Rings and the Dark Knight trilogy era and then he left Warner Brothers to go to Disney and then you know up ushered in phase one phase two and phase three um, yeah. and so now coming back into Warner Brothers as a senior advisor that's exactly why I hear David Zaslav being like doing the quote for quotes like I'm going to mar- uh, market this the same way that Marvel did with Bob Iger and Alan Horn which people think it's gonna be oh that means origin movie origin movie origin movie big team up movie it's like it's not that it's more like no. if you look at what disney does only movies that hit theaters star wars marvel and then and uh, original animated films if not their remakes so like mm-hmm. their huge tent poles have to be no matter what 100 percent successful they don't do yeah. a lot of like independent stuff which you would find like on disney channel or disney plus hulu original mm-hmm. prey just came out right why didn't that get which theatrical release yeah they 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 might be kicking themselves in the butt for that but Mm -hmm. unfortunately things like clint eastwood films edward norton films these like lower end high director films that like are only 50 million dollars may not see theatrical release they may only be on streamers uh, potentially part of you know hbo exclusive and that's how i imagine it um but uh I want to move on off of my news and get to some of your news because then we'll have. But questions. I liked your news because I'm in the same I'm in the same boat. Like I have had a deep and abiding love for DC, but I also temper it because, of course, you know that I have to be balanced. And as frustrating as it is, balance in all things is really frustrating. When it comes to DC, there is always a special place, especially for the Bat Girls with an S in my heart. As uh, Barbara started it 
but there was so much opportunity that has been completely like just put they're like oh it's okay we'll just let's just over here like if we're gonna roll, roll this out like marvel and that has always been a fear of origin 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 there are so many stories that have already been created within the dcu that we could kind of take from especially god damn it all of the animated stuff is like Never killing joke 30 minutes <laughs> no nope, first 30 minutes bye-bye um it is it is book to screen and taking some of that and using that as a jumping point would do exactly what uh disney has been doing with all of the limited run series on disney plus where they're testing out and giving origins for and i've been seeing the praises of young avengers literally driving people nuts because i'm like hey look who we've got over here who we've got over here young avengers young avengers give me young avengers um but being able to do that and those people that see that and like, oh shit, this was a really great show. They turn around and they go to their comic book, local comic book store and they buy the books and then they have conversations and then they find out what's happening and it's a delve. It's that wonderful dive that you want as like someone who loves to share their passion and their, and art. Um, and I really, ugh, <sighs> I really want that to be like to get back into dc because there's so many goddamn amazing stories that are literally sitting on the shelves waiting for people to come in and just go hey i want to tell this story like oh my god if we ever flip and get a mr miracle on in oh oh, oh baby jeez and, and, th and that, that's what i'm just like and so a lot of people i think again conflate that warner Brothers discovery is like destroying hbo max and destroying dc and all stuff it's like the damage is kind of already done Yep. Um, once HBO Max kind of hit the screen, and then like we, they had to compete with Disney Plus, and that's mm -hmm. someone who's in the industry-ish. I might hear whispers here and there. Everyone's having a every everyone's having a struggle with television right now, specifically. Um, and uh, I, I, and Ava DuVernay's New Gods. I could only imagine Tom King was on the writing writing room with her. Um, that it would have not just been like Dark Side and High Father. It would have been Big Barda and and Mr. Miracle, oh, which and that's 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 the, oh, all right. I and my my always pick. I was like, if 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 Daddy Zacky Snidey ever like wanted to introduce him, I was like, ooh, Gerard Butler as Orion would be pretty cool. But I don't know oh, who else shit. who else would be cool because I'm like, yeah, he's he, he's the yeah. spawn of Dark Side. That'd be kind of cool. But um, oh, sorry, and then they have a relationship. So um, but um, uh, that being said, uh from 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 page to screen uh some good news in the warner brothers Ooh. dc world what happened this weekend on friday mm -hmm. the sandy man showed up oh, on, on on netflix yes. and, and the number one thing that i saw which was so interesting was like how prominent the warner brothers television was showing up oh, like yeah. i was like G okay we get it it was like final fantasy 7 remake it's like did you know that seth roth's in this like we, we understand you have the rights <laughs> and it's like warner brothers is like we understand this is a dc we get it hey man mm, hey man mm. we get it but like that's hey, uh, they, hey, it was a vertigo okay i know yeah dc blah 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 but you put this you put this under like you hid them under the umbrella you're like Shh, neil gaiman i hear you write some good stuff here buddy you wanna you wanna try something try something new like this is exactly what they did with uh with gerard way when he mm. did his imprint too and they're like hmm, how do you feel about that what you're reviving doom patrol and we love it and we're gonna turn it into a show now yeah that's great like come on it's goddamn neil freaking gaiman like and, and, and i feel like they they i think I think in, in, in the earnings called David's as I said it's like we realized through the library and database of what all the IPs that Warner Brothers was sitting on like there's so much that they were not using that one that's not in development two they're not licensing out or three they're not selling out and it's like he's like we're gonna just do that and you know around the end of it was all just like by August we'll have 1.8 billion by this blah, blah blah we'll have blah blah in terms of just revenue which I'm just like mm -hmm. hopefully you and this is the big thing with big studios right now, and it's only because I'm experiencing it in my line of work of, like, a lot of executives are very – they don't know what to do because viewership is down. Viewership is yeah. down everywhere, and mm -hmm. um, we can go really far into it later on in just more of, like, a, like a, a, a philosophical conversation what streaming is. But, like, each show, like, on, on average now – pulls less than a million views uh unless like they have a lot of episode like three episodes at the go to binge and mm -hmm. it's hard to get that climbing and that's why like ne between netflix model between the amazon model between the disney plus model of like 
weekly episodes, first three episodes, a whole show. Um, everyone is just like, they don't know what to do. They don't know how to interact with the, uh, uh, a younger audience of how streaming works. So it's really, it's interesting to see like from a consumer point of like, man, like it, it, you're like the same, like what happened with Justice League, Justice League of mm. an identity crisis is literally just rampant right now in the entire industry. And so it, it, it's, it's interesting to see like, to me, that was such a huge win on Netflix's part. Very much like a kind of maybe in the same way of like Disney and Sony with Spider-Man, right? Where it's like yeah. Tom Holland, Spider-Man, big hit, big hit, big hit. Sony's like, yeah, yeah woo, that's us. And then like they're like, Te- technically, yes. <laughs> uh, but it's, you know, and then so it's like Sandman. It's like, oh, that's a big DC. It's like, technically, but, you know, everyone knows it's as a Netflix show. So it's, 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 uh, I, I don't, I mean, I've only seen three episodes so far. I've only got mm. introduced to Joanna Constantine, which I was really wondering, I'm like, are they going to say Constantine or Constantine? And yeah, it's the, it, it, he's 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 British, so he's like Constantine, and I'm like okay, mm. Uh, mm. and uh, it's interesting. I, as my own uh, take, I was like I would have done a little bit differently in just terms of certain performances, but like in terms of page to screen, and also just like what everyone should learn from that show is how to adapt anything to another genre, uh, to another medium, yes. video games, yes. books, yes. TV, like everything into a visual format, like. Because, you know, they do a lot of different things. It's it's a very actually different flow wise of what the the book is by tying in like this thing that weaves through every episode. And I won't spoil that. So, yes, not yet. Yes, not yet. But let me sing some more Sandman praises while we're at it, because. Of course, you and I have been literally beating, trying to beat people over the head going, have you listened to the audio play yet on Audible? Please, for the love of God, listen to this. Steve's is almost done. Thank God. So he's almost done with Act One. Praise be. Um, This was, I I saw panels constantly, constantly. I saw panels and I'm in episode four um, and I'm literally making myself slow down (laughs) so that I can enjoy it. But I'm like, that's a panel. That was a cover. That's a panel. That's a panel. That's a panel. That's a moment. And it's so lovingly crafted, which is much akin to how Neil attacked Good Omens. And you've seen Good Omens? No. Okay. So, so. (laughs) If you like this, Good Omens, it's on Amazon, of course. They did a very wonderful job as well. Um, Neil had his hands all over it, too. And it is very close to the actual book itself. And of course, because uh, Sir Terry Pratchett died, they were not able to make a second one, but they had a name for a second book and they had started working on it. Um, And so the second season of Good Omens, which is in production, of course, and Neil again is working on it, is taking his notes and Sir Terry's notes and combining what they have and building a new story with the same characters. It did so flippin' fantastic, Tom, that people are like, oh my God, I need more. And I was like, yes, what, yes. Now in juxtaposition, we've got such a great, um, a great turnout for Sandman. Also, oh God, the Corinthia. Boyd Holbrook, baby. Boyd Holbrook, I was like, so I was, I wasn't ready. I so was good. not ready. So good. I was not ready. Um, ooh. Um, but in juxtaposition, so we've got Sandman who, that did beautifully. We have oh, Good Omens who did beautifully. And then if we switch gears over to one of my absolute favorite game and books, well, one of them is a child's children's book that's still in production and I can't stop that, but that, I'm, I'm, that's later um, with American Gods. And it was all over the map. There are, like I love, I love American Gods. The audiobook, the tenth anniversary edition, is literally narrated. And if you liked Sandman, uh, you'll want to listen to that if you haven't already. But that struggled and had such great potential, but Neil wasn't involved in it, and mm-hmm. you could tell it was people doing interpretations. And with these, Neil has placed himself in such a place where he's excited about his work and when you have people that are passionate and excited about their work and they're like yeah i want to revisit this yeah we're going to change some things let's go you get product that make people salivate and demand more um and yeah this is i'm literally going i was i was concerned about tom it's tom sturgis yeah 
Sturge. Sturge. Yeah. I'm like the other Tom. I mean, <laughs> we could spec up your hair. You'd be fine. Um, <laughs> do it. Do it. Just all up. Um, I had been initially concerned because I was like, he looks the part, but I didn't know how he was going to sound. And after coming off McAvoy's performance, mm. mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <sighs> yes, give, give to daddy, give to daddy, <laughs> like Grace. It's, it was such a, it's such a delight. Um, again, I don't want to spoil it either because they've been stacking stories to run simultaneously and I'm ready. I'm ready. Um, I'm, I'm ready. Do you? I, I want to make sure. I want to make sure you go get some news. Unless okay, that was all news. your. Unless that was your news. Okay, because we got we got no, questions no, going through. No, so. no, I got another one. So, how much time do I have? Because I will be quick. I will g- be quick. G- give me, give me three, hand. give me three minutes. Okay, is that, okay, uh, okay, three minutes. Okay. Speaking of of imprints, let's talk to about the essentially the godfather of all indie comics the the todd father Mm -hmm. of course we've got um, him he's been teasing coming out sometime this year with a spawn announcement and we've got jamie fox in in that and jamie fox i think somebody even in the chat probably brought it up too because that was like i was like yes we gotta talk about this but jamie fox is like it's gonna be organic and natural and kind of joker-esque and personally i will i will out myself i have never i have not seen the new joker movie simply because i like joaquin phoenix i i don't know how i feel about that particular joker i've seen so many iterations of it you know how i know like three joker storyline man let's go Mm. like we got jokers for date yes i will bring all of them up tom and everyone will be like what what is she saying or oh god curse of the dark curse of the white knight Mm -hmm. like we've got oh so many jokers so saying that it's going to be like an organic joker-esque movie makes me question but not as much as i should because i'm excited to see the todd father helming this production and of course the good doctor is probably even more excited than i am but very skeptical and if we want to have a conversation about the todd father you know who you need to bring down look i'm gonna be i'm gonna be toxic i'm gonna be toxic as shit and i'm gonna say this all i want is uh, a castly library looking thing at night with some dead ass trees, lightning bolt. We pan down, we go <laughs> into the undercarriage of the library and then you see a man in a suit drawing some shit on a table and turns around and it's Todd McFarlane's like, have you ever died before? And, then, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, my friend Al Simmons, he died and he, he turned to spawn. And like, I, oh my God. I, I, no. I love that no. show. I love, no. I, I, wa- I like, if, if that happened, maybe, maybe, so maybe they do like an IMAX uh, presentation because oh they did that with Nope where they had Jordan Peele and yeah. Pete Palmer like talk about it. I would just love if they did that before like the IMAX sp- like premiere of like spawn. And just, I'm just like, Yes, because if you haven't watched the HBO mo- the HBO show of of Spawn, uh, every episode starts out with that, and it's just like, it's it's that thing where I love like old '90s TV shows where they would talk to the talk to the camera. They have a suit. There's some fog in the background. R.L. Stein, Jonathan Frakes, that yep. shit. And I'm like, there's something so warm and charming and silly about it. Obviously, they don't do that this one, but I'll just well, say, you oh. want it. Do you want it more Rod Sterling, or do you want it like '90s with the fog before? It, dun, 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 I mean, Rod. Dun. How do you say no to Rod Sterling? Stop. How do you say no to Rod? You, like, come know? on. Yeah. It is. He is. He is the one. He is the originate. No. Well, we've got Hitchcock that did yeah. it as well too. So, but we've got that. Ori- we've got that. That lineage of men coming in being like, "Are you wondering about something like this?" And you're <laughs> like, "Is this an infomercial? What did I miss?" And Have then you ever killed really someone good. in front of your daughter? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I just oh, love dear. Todd Farr. I probably do that. Um, <laughs> so we got questions. <laughs> Maybe we got answers. We Lord got, knows. We got we got some. I think these are cool ones. Uh, so this is this is a question that's actually been li- li- living in our bin for such a long time. Mm. Before we get started on the questions, though, everyone on the chat uh, who are watching later on, um, if you want to submit questions, be part of the show. Uh, check out nerdon.tv backslash discord and there's a channel for questions that is our favorite way to do it if not you go to nerdon.tv backslash uh questions and you can send your send it over there but there's the discord it's free you be part of the community continue conversations talk about all this mm-hmm. stuff we talked about here you know give me give me only me not amy give me only. some shit about things i didn't talk about on the Warner Bros. well you can give me shit but the likelihood that i read it is 
probably not as much as it's supposed to be like let's be honest i am and i'm not, I'm not I don't even have to out myself i've been a ready player one fan since the books came out and i was a part of the original like easter egg hunt the whole jam like we could talk for hours i literally loaded my discord reloaded it to check in on the server and see how everybody was doing and i was like oh shit i think tom messaged me a couple of times <laughs> Uh-oh. yeah uh so, yeah Okay, so the first question is going to come from Jeremy M. And he, he asked this a long, long time ago. And I never watched mm. this film until now. Uh, and so now I wanted to answer it. But then also, I could just explain to you if you haven't watched it. But you're, you're also, again, you're like a queen of a lot of things I haven't watched. Um, I'm working on it. But this is, this is a film question, though. But then you watch some anime, so I don't know. So the question is from Jeremy M. Would mm. you have taken Puppet Master's deal at the end of Ghost in a Shell 95? Why or why not? Do you know this? Do you know what the deal is? I don't remember, but because I, so I watched 95's Ghost in a Shell movie. Beautiful. God. But I was also on a road trip. So I remember that I did not get to the very end. Okay. And I remember like I was in the car with it like this and mm. I get motion sickness. Mm. So remind me what the deal was. So, so the Puppet Master was this AI that was created by the government mm-hmm. in order to, um, go into other uh, databases or to make attacks and stuff like that, and it became sentient. And then all it really yep. wanted was to kind of like live its own life because it discovered its own sentience. And you know, the entire premise of Ghost and Shell is talking about like what is the lineage or or delineation between humanity and you know uh, not having a soul. That is the point of what Ghost in the Shell means, the soul and mm-hmm. the body. Um, but very much in in the same fashion, like uh, Steven Universe and Fusion, uh, the Puppet Master's deal was like telling um the major um like if we combine consciousnesses we will cease to be one and the other we will just be a new consciousness but Mm. with that we will also be a lot more powerful and we can technically forever live and we can like whatever body we go into like we don't ever have to die if our if our shell dies and Mm. would you make that deal um you've been introduced to jasper i'm gonna be, i'm gonna pull from some saving universe you've been into jasper and lapis yes, yes have you in, been introduced to that conundrum that's right there well i know the corrupted and then lap i haven't seen a lot of what happened to lapis so far other than how she wanted to leave and then peridot was like i want to be your friend and then lapis is like but and but the last thing i'll say with jasper so far is jasper was uh bubbled so okay. I, okay, so so there's something I won't I won't say, okay. but there's moments that mirror that. Okay. So in Steven Universe, of course, if you do not know, welcome. We're going to give you a brief synopsis, and we're going to explain some ideas. Um, the ob, not the object, but the objective of a fusion is the combining of two souls, essentially, because of course they are sentient rocks, gems. Um, but the two are never fully one, if that makes sense. They both exist together. They are a conversation. They are constantly, um, they are balancing each other. So if we're talking um, Major and Puppet Master being together, you're talking about Major still existing and and Puppet Master still existing. And they're constantly, if they're not completely together um, in Steven Universe, their fusion breaks Mm -hmm. and they separate. Um, And this is something that personally i would have not taken um because while being being a part of a unit being a part of a team is a great thing having the autonomy to make decisions for yourself and not being like entirely tethered where yes our physical may die our shell may die uh, but then we'll be together forever what if i just hate you like legitimately, if I was in Major's boat and, and Pup Master's, like, do you know what I really like? I really like kicking dogs. Yeah, it's or like... something stupid like I like my deviled eggs with all just mustard. <laughs> like, I'd be like, nah, dude, I can't, I can't go with that. Like, we, we, we can't, I can't, I can't vibe with that. And then I'm like, and now I'm stuck with them for the rest of eternity, or until somebody decides to kill my consciousness. Or I'm shattered into a million pieces. And then the question is, is that little piece way too deep, my dude? I'm sorry. I, no, I would. That's the answer. No, hot. no, no, mm-mm. no. You? 
Would you? Uh, yes, uh, in a heartbeat, because I'm evil and I'm willing to tap into the <laughs> powers of evil for power. <laughs> um, because, it's all about the power. Uh, look, look, look. I, I'm, I, I completely disagree with Kanye at every mo- most times in my life. All one man should ha- have all that power, and it's only a good, <laughs> good person. And that's that's me. One I just, man. I'm sorry. Uh, well, okay. Mm. The, qu- the quote is, "No one man should have that much power, but no one person should have that much power." But to me, I'm just like. Mm. And that you know, I, I I subscribe to the whole money can't buy you happiness. Like you just don't know what to buy. You know exactly. Power corrupts. Money can't, at, yeah, I, I, money I, can't buy you happiness, but it can certainly make things go a lot easier. And you being happy on your day to day. And 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 I got I got I got my boy uh, Charlie in the chat, and he knows. No. Uh, Dune, the devil, a dictator. Do I mean I'm just you know, Dune, God Emperor. Sometimes God you got damn. you got to. Do the yeah. evil thing in order to help everybody. They, they, mm. and, and then like I'm totally cool with being painted as a bad guy, but I'm like, but I just in myself, I know I did a good thing and I and I might mm. not. And, and like uh-huh. I'm okay with that. Like if I must suffer being like, okay, I'm gonna take this unbearable pain of absorbing the puppet master's consciousness and I might like hate myself for it, but I'm just like, but imagine all the good I can do. I'm gonna suffer just... the little Tom. Let the little <laughs> let Tom suffer. Yeah, I'm, I, I, look, I look. I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a Ray Fisher cyborg. So many people. I'm just be like, mm, you have a billion dollars. Here's ten thousand for you. You got a billion dollars. Here's fifty thousand for you. Like just ooh, the power I would have. I'm like mm, just. It's like and data and all that shit. It's like ooh, student debt. What is what? What student debt? I go Wanda mode. You know what I'm saying? Oh, <laughs> what like, student debt? Huh? <laughs> um, you're like what, credit scores. What? What is no? That? Uh, what is that? Uh, and okay, so next question. Next question is going to be from T Dog eighty two eighty two. Before we do that, really quick, I totally want to show this because I know somebody in the chat was bringing up Fusion Ha, mm-hmm. um, and I was like, yes. Yes. So I have this thing that I do whenever I go to a convention and I don't know if people will be able to see it because you're actually up in my corner in my my phone. But so I always, no joke, um, I get fusions of different characters drawn by different artists. So my first one, there we go. Ooh, I like you, Ruby and Sapphire. Well, I also have, not on this batch, but I have... Um, <laughs> this one's my favorite. I keep it. Oh, Gambit and Rogue, I like you. I like that. I also have Lois and Superman, mm. um, Rufio and Peter. Um, like it keeps going. So it's my my ridiculous tradition that I have been doing for years. So I'm like, yes, Fusion Hot, bring it up, bring it, bring it. <laughs> Sorry. Second next question, go. Put those on the Discord. Uh okay. So next question is from T Dog eighty two eighty two. Uh, what is your? Oh, there you go. Here it is. I, this is this one. I think you 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 were gonna be great at this one. What's your favorite couple from not a, from a not so popular cartoon? Not so popular cartoon. That's the hard part for me. But what's a favorite couple? That's easy. Um, um, I can think of one that doesn't get to be like, like they're a couple, but not necessarily a couple on the technicality. Okay. Um, sorry, I also got really distracted because I went to go look for the first picture that I have of you and I together. And I was like, wait, no, we can't do that. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to say, because I have a truly madly deeply like delight in over the garden wall. Have you seen over the garden wall? Are you going to say no? <laughs> no, there is a running joke on this show that one user us ask us every stream mm-hmm. have we watched over the garden wall and we've done an episode on it i couldn't remember because no. i thought there was because i brought it up for forever and i was like yes oh yes, someone yes. please clip that and send it to ethan but no that was that yeah we watched it i love that show <laughs> I, it, it took me a while to get into it but then i was like oh you know what i get it now i get it now yeah so i will always give a great shout out to um wirt and sarah um mm because it's a super late bloom it's right at the end and it's not jason funderburger um and it's just like the space of unrequited love embarrassment um unabashedly and i'm so sorry that apparently i just fed into the joke um <laughs> so so un- like not super popular cartoon and then the other one um i'm going to give a shout out which is the best couple that ever existed in um, a limited series is going to be one one from Infinity Train. Now, I, I'm, I, I was gonna. It. Okay, so it's all, it's available on HBO Max. It came out on Cartoon Network. First season 
has uh oh gosh not ashley birch sorry i've been listening to dungeons and daddies and my brain is literally like anthony birch will campos freddie wong like my brain is on it um but it's ashley what is your name she's ellie in the last of us uh johnson, johnson. thank you um that's Wolf- it's her no it's not Wolf. i was saying that, that's wilfredell's wife no laura Wil- wilfredell's wife is laura bailey i think yeah the yeah. uh, travis willingham Travis he's, Willingham he's married is to, Laura he, Bailey. Will Friedle is married to someone from from mm. the D and D world. Yeah, and it's but, so funny that he's like not the famous one out of all of them. I was like, wow, that's cool. I Will, like that a lot. I like it's Will Friedle. Ah, I love Will Friedle. I had a massive crush on him. Anyway, um, so Infinity Train. Each of the seasons follows something different, um, and then it's going to be um, there's essentially a ball. Um, a ball named one one and the reason they're named one one is because they split apart and one is depressed so think of Stephen fry from hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy and then one is super optimistic and then they come together so like their relationship is super like it's they live they're the same body they are a conversation but it is so ridiculous so brilliant so much fun i love it and mind you infinity train had the same thing so they were like closet of course, Cartoon Network, Cartoon Flippin' Network. Um, their first season came out with a bang. It was great. Their second season came out with a bang. It was great. Their third season came out, and they're like, oh, we don't know. Um, we don't know. And HBO Max picked them up, and they were able to pr- pull, push out a fourth season. And then, of course, they left it in that space that all great, wonderful things do. And you're like, maybe they will. Maybe they won't. Maybe they will. Um, and also, real quick, flipping back to, of course, Over the Garden Wall, the um, – the bad reprint in the chat Mm -hmm. i have the cassette Mm -hmm. so i hear it on the reg about the four sarah mixtape um i have a sarah with an h who plays it on her cassette player because i am that weirdo but yeah the poetry it is terrible and it's so brilliant and the clarinet is horrible like it's great um but yes, so one one Infinity Train. If you haven't binged it, please binge it. And then of course, uh, Sarah and Wirt from Over the Garden Wall. Um, I don't know. I, I gave only... you lots of space. Go. I know. I don't. I only watch popular cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know any. I don't. At the point where I start getting into it, like it's become popular. So I'm like, I don't know what's not popular anymore technically. So it's like anime, but like you know, it, it, it's it's hard to think about that where it's just like. I, I don't know what's not popular or considered not popular anymore because I'm just like, they're all, to me, they're classics. And so, mm-hmm. like, one of my answers is going to be like Fry and Leela, but I'm like, that's yes. super popular. Um, oh, it, was, that, it got yeah. canceled and picked up so many times. I'm mm-hmm. like, everyone knew just because of, like, it was a show that got being canceled. Um, but, like, in a, in a cartoon form, it's just, I t- because like Steven Universe like to me like that's not like I wasn't like on my radar too much like I knew it existed but like now I realize like oh this is so it's so big and I was just like looking at the other mm-hmm. side I was looking at the moon when the sun was right behind me you know I was just like oh my god that's so that you know that's there so I, I don't I don't think I have an answer uh, from a not popular cartoon like it, only thing about it was, like not in um, like it's not talked about regularly I don't, the only thing I could think about is potentially potentially is um probably wally west and artemis croc from young justice but even then that's kind of popular yeah and but so i'm just I like, like it though so you know go. that's a good one but okay um so we want to the ne- the last question we pick from and you copped out and didn't give me another one from an anime like you didn't even give me a toru and and um oh my gosh i'm kyo from like an... 90s 90s or original like take it back to the old school i know you can from an anime then uh i mean I, only because it's like the most wholesome one i was like it's probably uh card capture sakura and lee yes and lee <laughs> and yes. lee that's it um I, and and the american dub the four kids or the deep <laughs> yeah. dub and where it ends yeah. where lee leaves and and then she she sheds a tear into the river, and then it makes the yes. the, the love card. Um, yes. So like I, I that's what I remember. Um, the next or in the last question, the pre-selected. Typically, we have some questions in the chat, and there is one, and mm-hmm. we we should answer that before we wrap up. Um, let's do. Let's do. 
Um, you know what? Again, you're, you're a good pick for this, so this is going to be your question. Ethan Who asks, favorite cartoon theme song? <laughs> so I will out myself. Um, when I was a teenager, I bought a cartoon where I actually released a CD of all of the theme songs that currently were available. Mm. I'm talking like the super old ones. So even older than me, like Wacky Races, mm. um, Josie and the Pussycats, Underdog. Um, and then it went all the way up to like Dexter's Lab, Johnny Bravo, I Am Weasel, Cow and Chicken, and I still have it and it's not scratched. So um, I'm going to have to pull from a couple of decks. So new, new, the, and you said theme song, yeah? Yes. Give me three. Steven. Give me three, Max. Okay. Okay. Steven Universe. Okay. Like, even if Wee. they don't, you don't sing it. Yeah. We are the, the crystal, crystal gems. gems. <laughs> yeah. And if it's just playing, like, the the uh, melody, or not the melody, but the, uh, what is it? The music box version mm -hmm. of that. Oh, so good. Just beautifully written. Um, and then I'm going to pick, it's going to sound funny, the underdog theme song. Um it is so wordy and so brilliant. Literally, it is when criminals in this world appear and break the laws that they should fear and frighten all who see or hear. The cry goes out for far and near for underdog. Under, like, speed of lightning, roar of thunder, fighting all who rob or plunder. Underdog. Ooh, ah, underdog. Underdog. Like, it's so wordy. And I loved it. And I was just like, okay, okay. This is ridiculous, and I love it. Um, you didn't expect that. I'm really sorry. No, I wasn't. And so, <laughs> um, and so, let's see. I mean, the Bob the Burgers theme is great. Um, and, and that's a problem. You got like, one last one. Only one last one. Uh, are we wait? So are we talking like children's? It says, car it says cartoon, cartoon in general. It says cartoon. And I'm saying cartoon, and I'm not. I'm not going to use anime in mine. I'm going to do three. God damn! Because I literally was going. Well, there's some animes that I'm just like, okay, fuck it. I'm going to do it. So newest run of um, of Fruits Basket season. Well, second. <laughs> no anime. Here's an anime. <laughs> Go no anime. So no, fuck it. Like no, because it's so good. It's the umbrellas theme. Like it's literally the second. I think it's the second arc that they did for fruits basket where it's all umbrellas and they're running through the rain and it's so adorable and it just makes me happy and i can't and if i'm not allowed tom am i not allowed an anime do i have to like no that's your pick that's, that? that's your three we gotta get people off so they can go, go home with their kids go. we <laughs> so... gotta get people off tom <laughs> yes tom. clip it we don't gotta get people off no that's what I do. okay yours go drop money in the donos okay so um <laughs> Three for me. Three for me. Okay, Number no. one is going to be uh, – shit, I just had them. Uh, I'm going to say Powerpuff Girls. Yeah. Um, okay. Wait, wait. Do they – no, they don't even have an opening theme. They have an ending theme song. This is dun, 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 dun. That's their opening. So the, I, I'm, I'm going to pick things with only lyrics too. So that one's not it. Um, uh, so I'm going to say um, with, with, an, with, with lyrics – uh, man, I literally had them before you went into an anime, and then I started thinking about anime. Uh, I told you. I could bring up another one with lyrics. No. <laughs> um, uh, oh, Spider-Man. Mm. Radioactive Spider-Man. There's there's no yes. word. It's just da -na -na, spider man <laughs> Spider-Man. That's it. But it's <laughs> badass. It's metal as shit. Um, that's all I want. Um, and that got to me. I think about what the hype was. I'm like, ooh, what got you hyped? And you know what's the unfortunate thing? Beast Wars and Digimon are all the things that like, they just said their fucking name. <sighs> they, there's no words. Digital monsters, Digimon. <laughs> like, say they would say they would Dragon Ball Z. I'm like, oh my god, they just say the they just say yes! the name of the show. But so I'm like, okay, what well, actually has lyrics? I was like, technically, okay, I say Spider Man because at least it had more than just saying Spider Man to radioactive yeah. Spider Man. So I'm like, okay, that'll count. Um, then I'll use um, uh with the theme song with words i will use there's not a lot in my repertoire. no there isn't in my repertoire. because our brain because let's be honest we go na, 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 na. well i mean i even think yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking of like 
uh, Batman or Justice League yeah. or Batman Beyond. And I'm just like, I was just thinking of Batman Beyond, but which all, is beautiful. But I'm just like, none of them have words. <laughs> um, so I'm just like, what cartoon actually had words in it? Um, and, you know, you already mentioned Stevie Universe. Mm-hmm. So I'll uh, I'll say, um, oh my God, there is, there is nothing. There is no show with a cartoon theme song with words. I mean, I guess Teen Titans. Teen Titans does count. Okay, you know what? Teen Titans. Teen Titans. No, Teen Titans. Teen, Teen Titans. No, no anime. <laughs> no anime. No anime. Because I hate myself, and this is hard. You you made it, yeah. Um, you made it hard. But let's be honest. Most of the the amazing cartoons that we grew up with, especially you, no offense, you are younger than me, um, came out with no, like, there were no words. Like, the Batman animated series. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, I will swoon. We have people that are crying and screaming over literally hearing da 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 That's it. And we're all like, ugh. You mm-hmm. don't need words for that. And you feel I, it. I, I mean, nuggies. like, even even the, like the Just League animated theme song was, like, really good. Yeah. It was like, which one's like, oh, got you, like, into that that that, that mode? Oh, got you fine. Hyped. I mean, oh, man, mine's such a basic bitch answer. <laughs> Fucking SpongeBob. <laughs> or no, no, no. Fuck, right. fuck SpongeBob. Uh, hmm. Fairly Odd Parents. Oh, a friend. It was. I like. It, is, no, no, no. It has it when um, uh, Timmy is an average kid that no one understands. But mom it, and dad and Vicky always getting in. Have you seen yeah, that edit where they friends. combine that with friend like me? Yes. And so I was like, isn't just friend like me? But it doesn't matter. Uh, oh, or somebody in the chat brought up Darkwing Duck. Yes. Okay, that, that, that's the, that's my boy. Yeah. Life he, is he, like he, a hurricane here in Duckburg. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He does. Oh, Ducktales. Woo. Yeah, that's good too. That's good too. I don't remember that. Yep. I don't remember that. Anyways, you, you can watch the new one. Watch the I new can. one; it's great. With the uh, with the with the Schwartz with Schwartz boy, uh, and David Tennant. And David Tennant. Okay. And Bobby Moynihan. Now I want to ask. I'm going to ask one question from the chat because we got to wrap this up. Um, and I don't know if you watched oh, this Raiders, because you you might have watched less movies than I have in life, but I don't, you might be watching more. Well, I have than watched less movies than you than you in this life, but let's try. Uh, because I can't answer this question. I, but, I have an entire shtick. You know what? I'm going to save this one because I know someone. No, I'm, do it. I have to say, do this it one. no. I have say, well, have you do seen it. have you seen the Elvis movie? God, no. But I see, have that's things it, that's about it. Butler. That's I but here's the thing: I have things about Butler that I don't feel comfortable with, just because I've been seeing him since he was a youngling, and so I don't know how I feel about this. Also, Tom Hanks in a chubby suit, so I wouldn't. I would be a biased uh, opinion. Well, sorry, I, I, sorry, I got, Chad. I got this question. We're gonna get this question Kick instead. It. We're gonna do this one. This comes Kick from Brad Rep- Bad Reprint, and I like this one. Question: Put on your screenwriter hat. It's time for the big one. How would you wrap up the MCU? Satisfying or not? Are we edging our uh, our Marvel universe? Like, are we edging our Marvel fans? Oh, I mean, I'll tell you how I, the... I'll end it. I'll tell you what, what I'm going to do. Um, you mean, like, we could be dicks and just, like, kill everybody and everybody dies. We could walk everybody into the sunset um my brain just goes we could do a dc proper and do kingdom come and like not deal with this at all mcu yeah i i prefer to see like mcu take the kingdom come storyline and then we figure it out that way but come on i i would dc needs to take that baby yeah I, <laughs> that, baby. that i i incorporate that storyline into my batman beyond a saga <sighs> Uh, God, because it's all so future good. stuff. It's all like the children. So I'm like, oh, that would just work so well. Anyways, um, my way See, of ending because it'd be so good. Oh, sorry, my, we my, want we have plans. Go, 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 go. My way of ending it would be uh, Justice League Dark, uh, uh, Apocalypse War. Um, but, That's DC. <laughs> but on a, but on the Secret Wars. But yes. Or, yes. or call it like not you can't call it Infinity War because they already did that. No. Um, but you You've call it some. Secret, it, it's, it, 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 it's 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 an end. It's an end where. I think the heroes win, but at a huge cost. Way more than just two characters dying, like a lot of characters. Maybe only two characters survive. And you know what? It'd be really cool if it was Wanda that survived and she was like, you know, like no more blah, blah, blah. Maybe she says mm-hmm. no more multiverse. And then you restart the timeline and then you have a whole new branch of MCU. See, that's like a war. Like we could run War of the, war of the Realms and parallel it to DC's like Battle World and we get the collapse and the collapse and the collapse. And then you could run it back that way. Like, it would totally make sense. Oh. And I like. So, in <laughs> Bad Reprint saying no more reboot. This is just the end. 
See, it's done. like if we were if we were gonna just if so that's the oh. thing. I'm like, were we gonna edge our Marvel fans or oh, no. were we gonna like lead them to completion? Was it gonna be a bad one where we have them crying in the corner with their tissues? Oh, uh, or were we just gonna leave them like oh, strapped to the bed? Then I'll do the Kevin Smith leaked a po- supposed Simpsons end way where uh I'll do I'll do it where it ends off where they're like the end of the universe, but then they peer into it and I think it would be. I mean, this is a tough thing. My question for you, because what I want to do is end it at the beginning. You want to do you want to do Futurama. You want to do the late Philip J. Fry episode. Yes. Where they get to the end and then it just restarts. It just restarts. The loop. So people who love it. I literally it, watched that episode yesterday. So you were in so much trouble. I knew exactly what you were so talking So people about. can watch it over and over again. And they can love it. And then if, if, if no more Marvel was ever made, that's it. Um, and But the thing is, when did the MCU start? And that's the thing with like technically what so far the DCU had was like Superman start is here. That's the start. Like that. So it's like it's kind of cool. But like to me, it's like okay, it ends with the Tesseract disappearing out of Steve's ship, yeah. right? And it's like that's it. That's the yeah. end. Like maybe, but I don't know. Uh, but then it's like okay, but then Captain Marvel was there. But then the Eternals were there. But then it's like there's so much stuff that has happened outside of it. So it's like I don't know where it would technically start. But like that's where I would end it. Is where it began. I like it. I like it. I'm good with this. I mean, the cop out answer is I kill everybody. I take everybody's money and I disappear. Like, (laughs) I'm just like, you have what you have. Be happy. Bye. And then like, I'd let the, uh, the prince live on and everyone's stuck with comics. And I'm like, "Mm, you know, you're going to have to learn. You're going to have to learn to adapt much like when our robot overlords take over and everybody has to go back to reading. It'd be really yeah, yeah. cool if they did the Batman Brave and the Bold ending, oh. where everyone just like, all right, that's a wrap, and then everyone starts getting taken out their makeup and all that. But then oh everyone starts God. picking up the comic books and reading those characters, and they're like, yeah, this is really nice. I'm glad our stories will continue, and that leads the audience to be like, okay, now I'm gonna pick up a comic book. <sighs> That'd be cool. Okay, I think we've I think we've officially <laughs> saved the MCU, <laughs> and now we are breathing life back into a not dying but a very misunderstood um, medium that could totally, totally support us. Also, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch was doing that when he went to pick up uh, BKV's um, The Oath, Doctor Strange The Oath, full costume in a comic book shop yeah, I saw that right, right before they went to that. And I was like, this is one of the reasons I like you, my dude. Like, let's go. Um, but that is it. We're going to wrap up the show. Thank you, everyone. We're going to, you know, we're, right now we're just done and now we're just chatting it up. Thank you, everyone, for, for being in, the, for, for bringing out the questions and chatting it up so much. Uh, I see so many, so many names and so many, so many things. Amy, thank you for, for joining last minute. Of course. Um, I, I was able to. That's the best part. I'm like, I miss seeing you, my dude. Yeah. And, and for me, I always uh, appreciate, like, uh, sometimes it, it, like you know no offense to my fellow co-host sometimes it gets a little samey and it's like you know add a little spice bring in the rotation stuff like that when it's samey bring in amy did you just literally line that up for that maybe i did maybe oh, maybe God. i'm a writer maybe <laughs> maybe or maybe you're gonna be the one that saves me maybe yes <laughs> you're but you're the writer all, now tom, but after all tom you're my wonder wall like oh. come on <laughs> <laughs> oh that's it you you win i i lose you win uh, <laughs> uh amy's great i like her amy you come back anytime people people want you back i want you back um and i mean also if you guys haven't come come to come to wednesday record uh podcast uh streams uh where the the Cape crusaders does that and i'm more of a, a background but you're a delight i mean the next one we've got up on the docket is going to be sandman and by then, Steve's will have finished the audiobook, which means we actually have a conversation and be like, let's talk about about yeah. how you're feeling about that. Because he has issues with Constantine and Joanna Constantine and Exe- like trust, trust. I get I get the text messages, Tom. So I'm just like, finish, finish, just finish. Just do it. Again, do so it. hard being a DC fan. <laughs> it's like, can't we just like it? Can't we just like the thing? Can we, can we have our nice things? Can, can we enjoy them? Yeah, can we have we a win? Why doesn't anyone want us to win? <laughs> I mean, I'm. I Steve's out here like, be... why is it not Keanu Reeves? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> he's like, why is it not Ryan? Uh, this true. is not acceptable. It's true, 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 true. Like, come on, I, I am forever a multifaceted 
comic book fan, but my heart belongs to Diana. I, I did like, I don't know if it's still going on. Please tell me. I did like that. She was running the Justice League dark team for a while. Yeah. Um, and that's see, and then we can go animated. God. Okay. Tom, we, we got to let everybody go. Like yes, 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 yes. we, we have to, we love them. They need naps. We're, we're going to go ahead and raid somebody, send you up the way. Tell, tell them your favorite thing you heard about today, you know, stream raid words, not gamer words, but like, you know, nerd on love peace and, you know, uh, love peace and chicken grease. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go over to, to Greg Chun and they're playing dead space. Some scary games for y'all. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, jam. this has been uh, the Nerd On update. You just got updated. You know the drill. As always, Nerd On. Nerd On.